Well, Bo, UFC 300, a big fight week, and I'm sure you're just happy to be here because it's been a while, right? It's been, you're not used to taking this long of a break from competition, yeah? Yeah, yeah, it's interesting, you know, I felt like, uh, I felt like I needed it because I had a lot of fights, you know, that past year, and so it was just pretty much all training camp, um, but at the same time, I love competing, so it was hard to take that much time off, but we're here, so I'm excited. When you go into a fight, like, are you one of those people who, like, visualize? Like, do you have expectations of how it might go or this or that? Like, do you visualize a lot? I definitely do a ton of visualization. I feel like you don't want to box yourself in and feel like, you know, it has to go one way and you can't make adjustments. But at the same time, I think it is important to have an idea, you know, of what I'm trying to do, what I'm trying to accomplish. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, I'm definitely doing a lot of visualization prep uh, leading up to the fight. Is it weird sometimes that you do all this visual visualization and then the fight is over in 38 <laughs> seconds? <laughs> sometimes, you know, I think uh, for me, um, the letdown is like the long training camp. And then, yeah. you know, leading up, it's like so much work and then it's over that fast. But at the same time, you know, given the, um, you know, possible like negative outcomes of the sport I'm glad to like get out healthy so mm -hmm. that's like you know definitely the main priority if I kind of showed you um, your record and how these fights have been going would you have thought that you would have fought a lot a lot more like over the like like since you joined the UFC you know I think that since I joined the UFC um, I didn't expect to fight more but I just expected more leading up to that point right like most people don't really get to the position that I was in uh, that quickly right um, so it would have been nice to have you know 10 or 12 fights before even getting to the big show, but that just wasn't the reality. And uh, you know now being in the UFC, it's kind of one of those things where I'm learning on the fly and trying to get experience as I can. And so you know part of that is is actual fights, but a big part of it is just training and improving mm -hmm. and understanding MMA, right? So you know I feel competition ready because I've competed my whole life in front of big crowds, but there's still that aspect of learning the sport of MMA, and that's what I feel like. Um, I've been diving into at this point, it, despite uh, being where I'm at, like in the UFC and stuff. Mm -hmm. If you like watch this sport long enough, you know what the UFC is doing. Like yeah. you know how they're building guys. You can see like y there's a strategy to it. You know, like where would you say you are in terms of like the UFC's strategy to to, to build you and, and kind of put you in a position to like a place to to have you know eyeballs on you? For sure. You know, I think that the there's obviously you know. Um, a strong relationship and I feel a lot of support just given the, the cards that I've been on, the positions that I've been on. You know, you don't see people with um, the experience that I have at the level that I'm at. And so, you know, I can definitely uh, feel the push and it, it, to me it feels like we're on the same team. You know, I think that sometimes fighters maybe feel like people are out to get them, this and that. I, I definitely haven't felt that way. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just excited to, to be in the UFC because it's the premier organization in the sport, and you know I think that uh, we're both helping each other, right? Like I'm hopefully bringing a lot of new eyes uh, from the wrestling community and stuff into MMA, and then of course I get the uh, benefit of the platform of the UFC and how big it is. And in terms of just like um, matchmaking and, and comp competition-wise, what do you see this fight as? How would you classify it in your career so far? You know, every every fight that I have, I think, is a step up um, in competition. You know, this would be my sixth professional fight, and I think, you know, every single time I've fought, it's been a guy that's been a little bit better, which to me is, is appropriate. And, uh, you know, my goals are to be the UFC champion, pound for pound number one guy in the world. And so, you know, this is a part of that journey, a part of that experience. And, uh, you know, I, I, take, I treat every fight the same um, in my mind as far as, like, this is the biggest fight of my career. And, uh, as, and, you know, when I think of competition level, you know, I think it makes sense uh, given where I'm at. And, and, like I said, again, it's a step up. Um, but like I said, you know, for me, the goal is to get the belt and, you know, defend it 10 times. So that's really what I'm training for. It's going to be impossible to find you an opponent that uh, is on your level when it comes to the wrestling. But is it kind of nice or different to know that you're, you are facing a guy who's ha had a lot of time on the mats? And so, like, he just he's not going to be, like, un like un it's not going to be foreign right. to him, you know, if that, if that happens. Like, is that kind of a, a different sort of nuance to this fight? Yeah, definitely different. You know, the first wrestler that I fought, obviously, you know, he's not only a wrestler but competed at a collegiate level, which is, you know, uh, a lot of experience. And for me, that's exciting because it's a new challenge. And I see, uh, like you said, you know, people aren't really going to be competitive with me on the wrestling mat, but this is an MMA fight. And so, you know, there's a lot of different aspects that come into play there. And, and the fact that he does have a strong wrestling background 
it's just a new challenge and something that I'm excited for. You hoping for adversity on Saturday? A little bit. Yeah, no, it would be nice to see a little bit. Um, I feel like, again, we, we talked earlier about the long camp and all the hard work and everything that's put in. And then if, if it ends so quickly, it's, it's a weird, like, mix of emotions. But if I could experience some adversity, I think it would be great for me, great for my career, and uh, just my development overall. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I would love to see that. I don't know if it will happen, but we'll see. Do you, you feel like in your mind you're 100% certain how you will react to adversity or just – or? even in your long wrestling career, like there's in, in, in the gym, there's still no substitute for actually being in a fight in the octagon and facing adversity, or do you feel like you know exactly what you're gonna, how you're gonna handle it? I feel like I know how I'm gonna handle it. I think that um, for me, the mental toughness and the physical toughness as aspect of the sport, it's really something I was never concerned with, never worried about, and I think that uh, just having been in, like I said, a competitive environment from a very young age, not only like competitive, but just very physically demanding and tough. And the, the, the type of stuff you experience as a kid in wrestling coming up, you know, the way I did, I think that that's just such good preparation for adversity and competition. And yeah, you know, at the end of the day, um, they are different. The sports are different, um, but they're both very physical. And uh, so, you know, I, I don't really have any questions with how I'll respond to adversity like in that moment. There are sometimes like when fighters throw out ideas and I'm like, dang, dude, I hope that happens. And so, like, your idea of, like, Hamzat and you, and you've been kind of, like, I mean, you mentioned him when you when you won your UFC contract, I'm pretty sure, you know? Yeah. Um, what, do, what do you think kind of, what do you think has to happen? Like, what, what do we need, what, what's, like, the dots to connect to see you versus Hamzat in, in Allegiant Stadium? Man, it would be amazing, first off. That's something that, um, you mentioned visualization as well. Like, that's something that I visualize and that I'm excited about, something that really, you know, gets me motivated. And so, I think there, there, there is a lot that needs to happen, um, but to like dumb it down, it's just like we both need to keep winning, right? Mm -hmm. So to me, that fight uh, is something that you know will be an amazing, amazing event, and something that I think the fans will appreciate, that everybody wants to see, and the most hype possible, right, would be for the belt. And so you know, he's obviously further ahead in his career than I am. So, you know, it would be more than likely something where I'm challenging. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, we both just need to keep winning. Mm -hmm. I need to get some more experience. He needs to keep doing his thing and we'll match up eventually, I'm sure. So for that reason, when he fights Rob Whitaker, are you like a huge Hamzat fan? Are you hoping that he stays undefeated? Part of me, part of me does hope that he stays undefeated. Um, you know, I don't really get emotionally involved or root for guys, but just based on like the storyline and what it could be, I would hope that he could win. Um, of course, Whitaker is an amazing fighter and a great opponent, so you know he's more than capable of winning that fight. But uh, just for for the storyline that that sake, I think it would be pretty awesome. But uh, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I just control what I can control, and you know, if if he keeps winning and we can make it happen, then that'd be awesome. If not, then you know, I'll pivot. This might sound like kind of a weird question, but it's just like you've been a unique guy, you know, like you just said, you're on the UFC 300 main card and your record's 5-0. Yeah. Like, when your career's done, do you think we'll, we'll talk about, like, your greatest opponents as, like, kind of like this generation, like the Izzy and, the and like, even Dracus, and I know he's pretty young still, but mm -hmm. Rob, like, like, are we going to talk about those guys as, like, the, the great fights that you had, or do you think it'll be, like, like, this new class that we might not even be completely aware of yet? I'm not sure, to be honest. You know, I think that I'm in an interesting position because... I'm kind of catching the tail end of some of those guys you mentioned, but also there's just a lot of new young fighters coming up that are uh, really tough guys that you know um, can do big things as well. So I kind of feel like maybe I'm in the middle somewhere where I can uh, you know get some bigger fights with some well-known, established guys, but also um, have you know awesome fights with guys that are coming up that maybe people don't even know yet. So it's kind of an interesting position. I think uh, um, I can kind of catch a little bit of both. Yeah. Last thing, uh, when you beat Donovan Beard and got your contract, one of the things you said um, to me it was you put a timeline. Because I asked you, when do you think you'll be the number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world? Do you remember what you said? Mm -hmm. No, I don't. You said <laughs> July 2024. Yeah, well, <laughs> I got, got some work to do. <laughs> <laughs> do you think, um, I mean, because you can be the number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world without anybody calling you the number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world. Where do you think you are? Like a... Uh, actual skills wise and because yeah you're not going to be on that list of a 5-0 and record but right. where are you you know I think that I've the main thing that I've realized uh in this game um is that there's always things to improve on there's always things to get better at and uh 
it's very similar to wrestling in that way. You know, I wrestled for 20 plus years, and now when I go into the wrestling room um, and wrestle or w watch film of myself competing in college, I'm like, man, I was so bad. I was like, just not that good. And and at the end, like I was the number one pound for pound guy in college wrestling. When I watch my matches, I have a lot of criticism on myself. So I think for me now, um, of course, that's that's a goal of mine, but. I would say the bigger overarching goal is just to continue improving and developing and um, just getting better. And I love the sport and I feel like I, my love and appreciation is growing every day in the training um, room and also, you know, when I get to come out here for fight week and just experience this. So um, that's definitely a goal of mine. I'm not there yet, but uh, I just want to keep working and keep getting better. And that's where I think the real value is. You know, it's not in the destination, it's in the journey and that's cliche, but it's very true, I think. Yeah, looking forward to the fight, man. Very much so. Welcome back uh, after a little bit of a layoff, and yeah, we'll see you Saturday. Thank you, appreciate it.